Ah, which one makes more sense? The BA50 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi or the X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi? These are both top of the line, top notch AM5 motherboards. There's some important differences between the two of them, but uh, you'd be well served with either one of them. So what makes the X870E worth it over the B850E, which costs quite a bit less? And there's also an X870 non-E, which we're gonna talk about, but is not featured here. So they're not appearing in this film. Okay, it all started with this, the B450 Tomahawk. This motherboard was a legendary value from MSI for AMD on AM4. So this is, this has been a while ago, but I have this board still. This board is legendary. It is glorious. It has a ton of features for what it costs. And because of the success of this board, MSI has been trading on that for several generations now, all the way up through the 800 series chipset. And so I'm scratching my noodle thinking X870E, this is the premium. This is the premium of the premium. Uh, the Tomahawk was kind of, it's not, value oriented is not the right way to describe it because it was sort of MSI's way of saying, look, this is everything that you need. We have cut it as far as we can without compromising on anything. And the X870E is plainly no compromises in any which way, with also not being the most opulent board you possibly can. Both of these have five gigabit ethernet. Both of them have a 14 uh, duet rail power system. I mean, it, both of these will be more than enough to overclock that 9950X well past 200 watts, in other words. This one has USB 4, 40 gigabit. This one does not. But, you know, even if you look at the, the PCIe layout, it's basically the same. And the X870E, this is one of the few X870E motherboards that does not split the PCIe Gen 5 lanes into X8, X8. This is 16 Gen 5 lanes in the primary GPU slot plus four Gen 4 lanes, plus one Gen 3 lane, and it's three physical X16 slots. You can see at the rear I.O., the X870E, it's got two extra five gigabit USB ports, and the block diagram shows that you actually have an extra chipset chip, which is connected through four Gen 4 lanes to the other chip. Now this is the difference between the X870 and the X870E. It's the extra chip. And some of the peripherals that are connected to the extra chipset chip are actually connected to the first chipset chip on the X870 as opposed to the X870E. Strictly speaking, the X870E has more connectivity in the form of USB ports and everything else, but at the end of the day, it's not more PCIe lanes into the CPU, so it doesn't really make a huge difference. But still, the cost difference between the X870E and the X870 at the time that I'm doing this video is not substantial, so it was, I would probably just go for the X870E if cost was not a factor. And if cost was a factor, the B850 makes a lot more sense, unless you really need the USB 4 connectivity, which is Thunderbolt compatible. AMD can't call it Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is an Intel technology. But if you have a Thunderbolt 3 peripheral, generally there's like a 95% chance it's going to work trouble free in those USB 4 ports. If not, hit me up in the forum and uh, let's diagnose. The rear I.O. on the B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi, you got HDMI out for the onboard GPU, 10 gigabit type A, you got two 10 gigabit type C, a five gigabit type A, and you got a stack of USB 2.0 ports for your keyboards and slow peripherals like that. You got your five gig LAN, and then you've got two more 10 gigabit ports, one type A, one type C. There's your Wi-Fi 7 antenna connectors, totally normal and standard, three and a half millimeter line out and microphone in, and an optical SPDIF. If we flip over to the X870E, we'll see it's exactly the same physical layout, except there's two more type A ports, five gigabit, and our USB-C ports, well at least the primary USB-C ports on the left hand side, have been upgraded to 40 gigabit USB 4. So those will do display out as well as 10 gigabit USB as well as USB 4, 40 gigabit. Now the physical layout of these motherboards is almost, but not quite, identical. One difference, this is the thinner heatsink on the B850. It doesn't matter if you get an M.2 that has a built-in heatsink. If you're gonna go for the Gen 5, Crucial T705 that we've featured like everywhere, uh, it doesn't matter. This, this heatsink, a little thicker. You can kind of see, see the difference there. This is slightly more metal. In terms of the physical layout around the board, dual eight pin power for the CPU, three four pin fan headers at the top for the CPU, another four pin fan header at the front edge of the motherboard, a digital A RGB header, and you got your diagnostic LEDs, the X870E also has your diagnostic code readout as well. 24 pin power, the MSI Easy Connector. MSI has some accessories for doing fans and other things. That's what that connector is for. You get your GPU Easy Release. 
If you get a temporary GPU to tide you over until you get the 5000 series GPU, it makes swapping GPUs easier. Just hit the button and it releases. It's fascinating, but this bottom slot, they say is only PCI Express Gen 3 by one lane. It's wired as though it's four lanes, but it only shows up as PCIe Gen 3 by one. You've got three more M.2 here the, with a basically identical layout, two under here, one under here. On the X870E, that second fancy PCIe Gen 4 M.2 also has a quick release header. Now, in terms of performance, you're gonna run a 9950X, you're gonna overclock it to 250 watts. These boards delivered basically within margin of error, identical performance. AMD CPUs really don't demand a lot of power. They're very, very power efficient. Running the eight core, 9800X3D, anything like that, these boards would set themselves up really well. If you're thinking about like a six core AM5 CPU, you probably could get an even more cost down motherboard. I think these motherboards pair particularly well with eight, 12 and 16 cores and on up for whatever's coming for AM5 in the next next generation, Zen 6. Well, Zen 6 is, is a ways out yet, at least at the time that I'm doing this video. For Zen 5, 950X, or 9800X3D. The 9950X3D is not out yet at the time that I'm doing this video. Any of those CPUs would be a good pairing with either one of these motherboards. And like I say, unless you want the two extra type A ports and some of the other G Wiz features on the X870E, yeah, this B650 is a pretty banging deal. At least at the time that I'm doing this video in terms of the cost difference between these two boards. DDR5 DIMM speeds, what do they work with? Well, you, you wanna run DDR5 6000. I mean, you could, probably could get DDR5 8000 to work, but the sweet spot for this platform is still DDR5 6000, DDR5 6000 with tight timings, and you wanna be able to do that. I also wanna call out the improvements that MSI has made over the last year or so for their BIOS. Historically, I'm talking about like four or five years ago, MSI motherboards, sometimes we're a second class citizen with some BIOS features and some Linux features specifically. But MSI has been making a lot of improvements to their BIOS and it really shows. And that can also help if you're running operating systems like Linux, it makes things a little bit more accessible. And the USB 4 stuff can work just fine in Linux. So you could use that as a high speed connectivity kind of a thing. It's like, oh, I wanna add a 25 gig ethernet card. Well, the, the interface speed, even though it's 40 gigabit, it's really, really like 20 ish gigabit, but you could run a 25 gig NIC at about 20 gig and still beat 10 gig all to pieces. You can also use those for crossover networking. So like you could get three of these and put together a little mini cluster with 16 core CPUs. That's actually kind of a, an interesting and amazing use case for AM5 CPUs. That should be a little more on the Epic side in my opinion, but hey, uh, maybe a video for another day. I don't know. Engage in the forum because we've got a lot of that Thunderbolt networking stuff. I've, kicked off a lot of the Thunderbolt networking stuff again because it had started to bit rot a little bit in the Linux kernel, but it's coming back, it's coming back. A little more stable by that, I mean. So there we are. The X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi and the B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. And maybe if you know what you're doing, the X870 non-E would do something for you that the B850 doesn't, but doesn't quite rise to the same cost as the X870E, depending on what you have, where you are, what's available, that sort of thing. With the big difference being USB 4, mainly. And USB 4 is really cool stuff. I'm really happy to see the direction that MSI is going in terms of uh, the coherency of the BIOS. It's coherent. It makes sense. They've made a lot of improvements. It's not just, you know, the MSI way of doing things. And also better Linux support. Also very nice. Very nice to see those kinds of things. And the only thing that doesn't make sense about this board is where they put the power connector at the bottom here. Because if you have a giant GPU that you were going to try to run in this slot, uh, it's going to it's gonna kind of get in the way. If you are running a, a really big honking GPU, like a 5090, it doesn't really matter anymore because the 5090 doesn't really pull a lot of power from the PCIe slot. At least the Founders Edition doesn't. That may not be true of add-in or other board partner versions of the card, but this extra power connector is for PCIe peripherals that might demand a lot of power from your motherboard because otherwise you've, you've only got like two 12 volt lines to use from the 24 pin connector and it's really, that's not fabulous. So that's really not a lot to complain about though. I mean, more USB is always nice, but again, balancing features cost everything else. And you know, even though it's only two extra type A ports, it looks like a lot more when you're looking at the backs of the X870E Tomahawk motherboard. So if you pick up one of these and you do a build, you know, show some pictures of it in the forum or something. I don't know. A lot of fun. A lot of fun taking a look at these motherboards from MSI. Maybe think about it for your next build. I don't know. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. If you have any questions or you run into anything weird, let me know. Make sure you update your BIOS when you get a new motherboard too. That is job number one. All right, signing out, I'll see you there.